I'm Chris Bauer, and I am an art slinger. I travel around the U.S. selling artwork at comic and anime conventions, and while I'm there, I like to check out cool sites, eat great food, and see all the places my favorite movies and TV shows are made. Welcome to Sets, Streets, and Eats. Except that motor. You can still see a lot of furniture, old lunch box, child's potty. Crazy. Hey guys, welcome back to Set Streets Neats. I'm Chris Bauer. You are, or I am, we are together in a ghost town in Bodie, California. It's a very famous ghost town. It's been on my list to visit for a while. I happened to be only a few hours away at the Clown Motel last night, and I thought, you know what? Today's the day. We're finally going to go see it. So a little background about Bodie. Bodie was established by William Bodie uh, in 18, uh, I guess it was 1859 that he found some gold uh, in these hills. It was the gold rush, of course, had already happened and, and uh, everybody was all the way out west. So they decided to come to the east side of the Sierra Mountains, which is where we're at, uh, and start mining that uh, since everybody had run all the way west during the gold rush. Sorry about the wind today. Anyway, um, so this town was established by, by 1870, 1875, when they really found a good ore of gold. This became a huge boom town. Um, at its peak, it's said to have eight to 10,000 people living in it. Um, the, all the buildings, which there are numerous, numerous buildings still here, that's only about 5% of the total city or town um, of Bodie. All the rest of these structures over the years have been kind of, uh, the elements have taken away or fires or whatever. In 1962, the state of California made this into a state park and the remaining buildings of Bodie became under their care. And they didn't restore them. They left them in a state of what they call arrested decay, meaning they're gonna leave everything as is inside the buildings, but say if a roof collapses, they will restore that or fix it, I should say, back to the way it looked before the collapse. So it keeps it looking exactly the way it was left. Now, Bodie was not abandoned until 
well by the 19 by 1900 it was already starting to filter out but at its peak in the 1880s it had over 30 mines working these hills and a huge operation going and many stamping um, uh, factories as well so uh, it was it was a big deal and finally um, everything just started drying up and people started leaving and and then there was basically one family that owned the whole thing uh, by the 1950s and they only had a caretaker up here to watch it so at that point the state took it over and it became a state park and now you can come visit it today So there's a couple pop culture references here. Um, this church was, well, the town of Bodie was visited by John Wayne. Um, John Wayne did a tribute to America back in 1970 and he came to Bodie. There's a shot from right here. Basically, he walks into frame, basically right here, and then he pauses, and they do a shot over his shoulder, looking up at the at the bell tower, and then he walks into the church. So um, it's definitely uh, John Wayne went right up these steps and right on into here. So you can see what they mean by arrested decay. So you've got, oh look, they left the offering plate. Everything's got that nice coating of dust over it. The archway says, praise waiteth the God in Zion. You can kind of tell from the arch and from the back wall that the whole building's kind of listing to the right. But look, they even still have the organ over in the corner. And of course the wood stove to keep it warm in the winter because this is definitely a spot in the Sierras that gets lots of snow. What's really cool about ghost towns, especially ones that became tourist attractions decades and decades ago is you can come here when in the 80s or come here now and compare pictures and nothing changes. Uh, it's pretty neat to have something that's frozen in time, so to speak. A lot of these houses uh, were abandoned so early on that they really left all the furniture because they really couldn't load it on the wagon. Um, and they just left it in the rooms and the houses just kept standing as they do. So this is the J.S. Kane residence. Uh, J.S. Kane uh, came here early on, but quickly became the, I guess, richest man in town, being the land major landowner. But he really didn't acquire all the landowner and the maiden or mine until the 1940s. He was actually the last major landowner in town, and his family was the one that had the caretakers here until the state took it over. I was obviously here long enough to have many styles of flooring. You can see the different layers. Those 
people throw the coins in on the bed. Old sewing machine in the corner. little carriage house behind the Worth store. Old carriage was left, old chairs. Looks like a little workbench back there. Probably some, uh, I see a lathe and some assorted tools. Looks like a little toolbox. Probably 1920s or older. Probably older than that. Looks like an old liquor bottle right there, laying on its side. Pretty cool. That's what a garage would look like a hundred years ago. This is the Boone Store and Warehouse. You know, the uh, plates of tin that cover every outside surface of the store. That's one way to keep keep the weather off. I wish you could see better in here, but there's really not much. But see this old desk with old receipt books. Oh, uh, there's even a pair of glasses laying on that book. I don't know if you can see it or not, but old gasoline can over in the corner. It's pretty cool. I just sealed it all up and left it there. It's pretty awesome. So the general store really got left alone, and I really wish you could see in this. I don't know if you'll be able to, but so many cool things. Old barrels and things that were clearly for sale. Sleds. <laughs> This probably got used its entire time here, so would have had stuff from the 1880s all the way up through the 20s when people pretty much quit needing it. Uh, kind of wish they would have. Kellogg's Tasteless Castor Oil and probably other assorted drugs. There's a, there's a dress form right there. All kinds of, we got all the cans still left. That is really, really neat. It's a snapshot in time. Penny candies, big. Buckets of penny candies up in the counter. Oh man, that's so neat. <laughs> There's even a sign. Let's be friends. Please do not ask for credit. I mean, this would have been long before a credit card was ever thought of. Wow. Very neat. I love that. Old telephone back there on the wall. And right below that counter, you see the edge of the Bodie Mercantile General Store sign leaned up behind that barrel. So right here on the corner next to the store we were just looking at is a, another point of pop culture history. Um, back in 1987, um, Bono and the boys from U2 uh, chartered a bus from Reno, which is just north of here, and they were uh, wanting the bus to take them to Joshua Tree. They were working on a new album, and they decided to stop by Bodie to check it out. And they just took 
several photos. One of the most famous ones right where I'm standing, basically a little bit farther behind me. And that's part of the album cover. And Joshua Tree, the album, went on to, I think it was their fifth or sixth album, but it made them household names everywhere. It was a huge, huge smash hit. But uh, part of the iconic imagery of that album cover was taken right here behind me. Another really cool shot from that album shoot was taken right here in front of this building. Look at that old luggage. They don't make those anymore. That's how you traveled. Steamship, steamship trunks, I believe is what they were called. And all the drawers, basically its own dresser. You hung up your suits in the large portion. And the old switchboard still here. It's hard to see. There we go. <clears throat> and of course, since there was less than a hundred people here after in the teens, nineteens, all the way up probably till the late nineteen twenties or thirties, they of course had automobiles and a gas station. You gotta be able to fill those cars and trucks up. <clears throat> I'm sure the truck is not original, but it looks cool nonetheless, but it does look like these pumps are. And it was an old shell station, what do you know? <laughs> Looks like some people have used it for target practice over the years. Oh, that's cool. sewing machines of course in every room because if clothes got tears or whatever they had to be repaired immediately you might have to wear them again the next day look at the old wallpaper wow that, that table is beautiful obviously handcrafted and just too heavy to take anywhere so these left it behind oh, look at that old bedroom oh yeah the old bed, the trunk, the dressers, even clothes. Ooh, and coats. Still hung on the wall. And look at that portrait of America's first president, George Washington. So this was probably one of the saloons. Look at that, all the old chips are still there. The old roulette wheel. poker table so it looks like two roulette wheels look at the old bar in the back if you can see it of course the piano adding the ever important ambient music wow I'm sure it's a prop but someone put an old bottle of whiskey in there still <clears throat> that's pretty neat it's also significant because Bodie had over 60 saloons here. Think about that. Town of 10,000, and they had 60 saloons. But it was a mining town. All those guys would get paid, and they'd go right to the saloon and spend all their money. There isn't anything else to do out here, even still. So you can imagine that these were the sources of fun. This appears to be a barber shop. There's a little shoe shine spot right there. And uh, wash basin looks like a little child's boot over on the table. It's right on the side of the saloon, so you go get your shoe shined and your mustache waxed and cut, and then go play some roulette. Cause you're a fancy guy 
fancy fellers, and you had 60 of these places to choose from. I'm sure they had their favorites, but uh, it's rather impressive. So this was the biggest mill, her mine and mill and stamp, um, uh, stamp mill, and uh, this was the stamp, they called it the standard mill, or standard mining company. It was the one that was still around at the end. Um, basically kept the town going as long as it could. Another interesting note about that casino slash saloon behind me. Um, part of the reason those were so successful here, obviously it being a mining town was the main reason, but this town was not known for law. Um, has many boom towns. Um, probably the best example in modern history of a good show or movie about it would be Deadwood on HBO. Um, that's talking about Deadwood, South Dakota. Those towns that pop up had a real hard time with law. They had a lot of unruly uh, men and people in general that would go to those. They would flock to these towns to make their fortune and they lived very wild and uh, law became a real issue. So this town was no exception. In fact, there's a saying, or there was a saying back in the day that, so long God, I'm going to Bodie. Um, meaning that there's a good chance you were going to die there. And there was probably not a whole lot of church going folks here. Obviously they had a church, but for the most part, uh, these folks obviously worship saloons and casinos old carriage house actually this might be yeah this was the old firehouse look at that old wagon with the hose they'd fill it with the i guess the not wouldn't be water it probably would have been some type of chemical and they'd run it out there and then there's the cart a couple of carts with big bells on them Hose nozzle on the front of it. No fire pole. Those hadn't been invented yet. Many lanterns. I can see the remnants old sled out here horse sled looks like they had that was a workshop for building some of them because I see a couple of them in there old truck left here to rot they actually have a little museum and gift shop on site right in this building right down Main Street you can go in there and Check out some more of the history of the town and buy a bumper sticker and whatnot. Help support it. I'll probably go in there before we leave. <clears throat> Old fire hydrant. Eighteen seventy nine. That's pretty cool. This is the old schoolhouse. Um, the original schoolhouse actually burnt down, uh, I think within the first 20 years of being built, and they replaced it with this one, which still stands today. Got the old school bell up top. Uh, oh, yeah. Looks like an organ. Oh, lots of books. 
cap of the human skeleton. Gotta teach those kids there's 206 bones in the human body. miniature form of mining equipment so they are probably teaching about what goes on here in town I see a map of Europe and the United States over there lots of furniture school desks Wow look at that globe it's just rotted from the Sun stone desks the old stove arithmetic written on the blackboard very cool teacher's desk with that yardstick meant for wrapping those knuckles when you weren't paying attention oh the good old days these are all houses going all the way up the hill on Green Street, which is one of the main streets right here. We're going to go turn down toward the mill. So according to the map, those are all houses, which are cool and all, but there's nothing super special up there. Except a heart attack for me. I think we've well established that walking and hiking although I love it not great for me well it would be good for me if I did it more often that's a little rough a little rough a little out of breath This is the standard mine mill, stamping mill. Uh, it says you can only get into it by a guided tour, so we won't be doing that. But I'm sure it's pretty neat, filled with equipment used over a hundred years ago to mine silver and other precious metals. Just as a side note, um, this area of California Nevada especially um, if you're into ghost towns like this there's actually a bunch uh, those silver mining and gold mining towns that all popped up um, a lot of them got abandoned by World War II and they were just left out in the wilderness and uh, until people started taking notice and started preserving them um, there's some really cool ones out there but this is definitely one of the coolest uh, I've been to a couple that don't have anywhere near this type or uh, many buildings. Um, this one's got a lot more buildings of any ghost town that I've been to thus far. But uh, there's one actually south of here in Nevada called Rhyolite and they've been into an art installation as well. It's really neat. But if you have interest in stuff like this and a lot of people do, it's definitely worth planning a trip for a vacation to come out and visit these ghost towns. Obviously, we can keep them uh, in that state of, as they call it, arrested decay only for so long. Eventually, these will be gone. Um, and they're a glimpse into our history that just doesn't exist anymore. And then you wonder, with how forgetful humans are, if once this is gone, we just won't ever have anything to remember it by. But it's pretty neat um, how everything was left the way it was left and then they just preserved it that way um and it stands the reason you know many years after it was abandoned i'm sure it did get looted a little bit but not for the most part but it's also probably because this place is up in the middle of nowhere you gotta really want to come loot this place to get out here it's an old cable pulley system from the mine that's jammed Oh, that one still works. 
Oh yeah, I'll get out of its light. You can see it. Cool. I love how the weather cleans metal. I mean, sure, it's got rust, obviously, but it just, like say it was painted or who knows, you know, however it looked, all that goes away and it's just that metal's left. This was probably a mine hole at some point that they filled in. It's got that little mine or a mound around it. It's kind of the telltale sign. Uh, lastly, who knows if this ground out here is even, I guess it's okay because people have been coming out here for years, but you know, however deep those mine shafts go, I'm surprised there's not more sinkholes out here. Given that, I'm certain those mine shafts have either been filled in over time or just are in a sad state of disrepair. Also, it is absolutely gorgeous out today. Um, it's the first day of September, 2021. And it's probably high 70s. Man, it's beautiful. little creek we just walked over but it's of course dried up this is what would be the dry season i'm sure in the spring it's a raging mini river uh, another really cool thing about if you uh there's obviously there's obviously plenty of paths and whatnot to walk down or roads but if you walk out into the grass you'll find all kinds of stuff trash lots of metal stuff um and I, what I mean by trash, I mean from then trash. Uh, there's stuff all over the ground. There's a very big rule here that everything remains where it is. You're welcome to pick it up, look at it, but drop it right back where it goes. And uh, it's a good rule to honor. <sighs> kind of leaves it for the next generation to take a look at when they come see this place. Old coffee cans and all kinds of stuff. Lots of mining equipment, obviously. Um, it's pretty neat. I don't think it's crazy to say that there's about a hundred buildings still out here. And that's like 5% of how big this was. You can imagine this whole valley was just covered in structures houses and buildings and and don't forget you know there was 59 other saloons bank all that's left of it is the safe still here but the rest of it's all gone except for doorways clearly I prefer the ones that don't have windows so I can see directly into them without that reflection. Eh. Could this have been the jail cell? I believe it was. Not only do we have bars in the windows, but there's bars on that door. Would this have been the old sheriff's office? Not a whole lot of law here, but I'm sure they had to at least try. Oh yeah, look you there. Look at this little old West jail cell. How cool is that? Looks like the old cot or whatever bench is gone. But there's the outer door. This is the window. They could have just 
sat here looking out forlornly out at the old prairie wishing they could get away right before they got hung you know which was the common fate of criminals back then looks like a lot of blacksmith stuff maybe that's what it is yeah I'd say so you got the anvil right there I know my buddy Ryan would love for me to get that for him but can't do it bud yeah, that's the blacksmith shop. Man, got all the tools still over in that bucket and on the shelf. And that bucket right there. See that? Right there. See a whole bunch of tools on the workbench. See the big billows? Giant billows behind that hood. <clears throat> right there. Look at that. There's the snoot. How's a big one? I love that it was, this town was established during the romanticized Old West period of time. You know, the after Civil War, 1865-ish to... 1890 um, but it also has the early 20th century flavors built on because it lasted until the teens and 1920s I think that's pretty cool you kind of get a look at a swath of history of years and how we built things and did things um, I think that's awesome Whew, dust storm. That's fun. Oh, a little dusty in the eyes. In the mouth. This is cool. That's what's left of an old chair. And look at this pile of what seems just to be trash. It's like, it's paper, it's clothing, it's cloth. storage shed wow this is basically like most people's dirty garages except this was over a hundred years old with all the stuff in it wow that's pretty cool this is more of a modern garage from when it finally went away you see old Maxwell house and old uh oil cans and probably for kerosene and <clears throat> probably more 1920s well, that's interesting well only to me it smells like my grandmother's garage used to I remember when I would mow her lawn when I was a kid it has that same odor that's interesting Huh. Ooh, even had electricity in this place. Looky there. This was a fancy garage. You'll see the outlet box. It's that white. It's got cords coming out of it. Sorry, I have crappy zoom on this camera. 
That's all it goes. It's a chair with a fedora sitting on it. Looks like Indiana Jones fedora. And it looks like there's some deer antlers at the base of the chair. Hat on chair, down to deer antlers. Huh. That feels very not safe. Oh well. Yeah, bird cage. Huh? That's pretty neat. Old tea kettle still on the stove in the kitchen back there. So, several of these houses, probably at least half a dozen, are used as employee residences. So the park rangers, or just caretakers, maintenance men, they live in some of these structures. Um, the windows are all kind of covered with old timey looking stuff, but my guess is on the inside, they're probably a bit modernized, but I am not 100% sure on that. Oh, that's cool. Look at the tricycle, or what's left of it, on the porch. Oh, that's neat. There's just all this old mining equipment everywhere. Some heavy duty tools out here. Check that wrench out. Good lord. That's a two manner. size one right there. Looks like the funeral home. More than the undertaker's living quarters. So, as this town cleared out, they would leave things in the houses, and then the people that were here, there was a lady that was collecting things too, in case they didn't want to take it with them, and that's what this collection is. It's all this stuff that was either given before the families left, or they were left in the houses. It's pretty neat. Of course, you have a couple of coffin carriages, the undertaker carriages, funeral processions, again another child coffin, terrifying. 
but uh, old old slot machine from one of the saloons. Kerosene light projector. So what's really cool is um, not all uh, ghost towns charge to see them. This one does, but it's a very affordable. It's only $8 a person, um, which I think is very affordable, especially since this is probably the most complete ghost town I've ever been in. Most ghost towns are just a few buildings. This is largely intact and very cool to see. Parking's free, plenty of it. It is a trip out here. It is out in the middle of nowhere. But it is a gorgeous trip out here. We're way up in the Sierra Nevadas. It's right past Mono Lake. Very, very beautiful, right outside of Yosemite. You can make it a whole week trip and hit this on the way to Yosemite. You would not be disappointed. Well, that about does it for me. This was a really awesome visit to Bodie, California. I get to knock this off my bucket list. It's been on there for a while. I love the whole ghost towns. And like I said, uh, if you've never been to one, plan a trip to Cal Northern California and Nevada. There's so many great ones. There's actually a few in Southern Nevada and Southern California too. Um, but yeah, they're, uh, they're such a cool snapshot in the history which I love. So if you enjoyed this video, I do some stuff like this every so often. So I think you ought to click that subscribe button and like the video. Leave me a comment below, like my social media. It's all right there underneath the video in the description. Whew. This is all on a hill, y'all. I'm about ward out. All right, I'm gonna try to find my way out of here before the ghosts get me. See you next time.